a Catholic mom who wants to make meaningful income for her family, maybe because you want to bring your husband home or you don't want him to work overtime hours anymore. Maybe you want to send your kids to the Catholic school of choice. Maybe you have some causes like a pregnancy center or initiatives with the poor that you would love to throw your money behind. If you feel like you're currently spinning your wheels in your business and you're looking for a plan that can help you move towards this meaningful income that can help all the things that I just mentioned actually become reality. Today on the Possibility Mom podcast, I'm bringing on Stephanie Donahue, and we're going to talk about 40 skills that are necessary to increase your revenue and the different pathways that exist for entrepreneurs who want to grow their income significantly. That's what's happening on the Possibility Mom Live. Stephanie Donahue came into my life by just the wonderful thing that is the internet. I had never heard her name before. I had never crossed paths with her in any kind of Catholic circle or even non-Catholic circle. But when I started following her online and kind of learning more about her story, I honestly couldn't believe we hadn't crossed paths. We have been in so many of the same secular online business groups and communities. We have attended so many of the same events. Um, She attended a university where I have so many friends who went there. Like I kind of was like, how have we not crossed paths? And it was just so clear to me that we were meant to become fast friends and create some really interesting things together. So I'm so excited for you to learn her story. The thing that I'm most excited about for you to hear is that there is hope for you in your business. I coach a lot of moms who maybe have just started a business, have a dream of a business and haven't started or have been at it for a while, but are not exactly happy with the results or they fear that putting in more time and effort and energy is just going to be more wasted time and effort and energy because they've tried so hard all along. So if you are in any of those boats, especially if you feel like I've already been working so hard, how on earth can I get to that next level of my business without sacrificing what matters most to me without neglecting my children, without neglecting my marriage? Like, how is that possible when I already feel like I'm working so hard? If that is you, I want you to pay attention. And I hope that this podcast is the kind of podcast you can come back to and listen to whenever you need some encouragement, whenever you need some practical tips, and whenever you feel like you are, hope is gone. When you feel like hope is gone and you want to give up, that it's not possible to make any more money than you are making now, I want you to come back to this podcast. Everybody, join me in welcoming to the Possibility Mom podcast, Stephanie Donahue. How are you? How are you? Good. Thank you for having me here. I'm so excited to share you, share your gifts, share your story. I really just like want to encourage people to pay attention, get out your notepad, get out your pen, because there is going to be some serious, serious nuggets um, and some truth bombs dropped in this episode today. So before we get into all of that, Stephanie, for anyone who might not know you and your work, introduce yourself just a little bit for us. Okay. I'm Stephanie Donahue. I live in uh, Washington State, and I have been uh, online working for six years, uh, serving mostly online business owners who have successful businesses, and I support them in the back end of their business and help to lead the team and, and to help with the growth and the scale of the company. I love it. What got you into online business in the first place? I know you have a long career as a nurse right previous to this. What made you make the change to online business? Mm, okay. Well, 
I launched my first blog post on April 4th, 2017, and um, that opened my eyes up to the world of online business because I had to market the blog and, you know, get the eyes on it. And so that was very exciting for me to see the possibilities and, and then learning about digital products to monetize and affiliate marketing and and so it was just a very fascinating world that that I just felt like this is this is it. <laughs> were you like me where you were always interested in online business? So like when you were a nurse, was this something that kind of kept popping up for you throughout the years or did it only come in 2017 for you? Well, while I was a nurse, I did do some side stuff like I had an eBay store <laughs> where I sold clothes, like I buy wholesale and then sell them. Um, so that was some extra income. And then, and then as well, I had some some success with um, network marketing. And like my favorite, like I've been in DoTerra for a very long time, and uh, you know had success with that. And then as well, um, I did pamper chef and and to go with that too. And just, so that has fascinated me, just the whole sales. So what made you, after you did your blog, what made you realize, oh, I actually really enjoy this. I have a knack for this. What made you start doing this for other people? Mm. Yeah, so I joined these programs, the ones you were talking about. And what happened is like, I enjoyed helping other people to implement the program. Mm. And I realized that there's something different about me that that uh, I was this this was actually a, a, a strength of mine. And so somebody mentioned, you know, what, you should be an online business manager where that's what you do. And so I looked I looked it up and I got certified, you know, later. <laughs> I signed up right away. <laughs> and that's that was my very start was being an online business manager. I read the book Rocket Fuel. I I. Uh, became an integrator per se as well. And, and so that I kept going down the operations path, but also kept the marketing path along the way because I enjoyed that too. So, okay. So right before we got on here on my Instagram, I was sharing that, like, I think I have a master's degree in online business. Like I think the last time I counted, I have invested over a hundred thousand dollars in online courses and certifications in different things to continue my learning so I can benefit myself and benefit my clients. You have a PhD in <laughs> online business. So can you just list some of the certifications that you have under your belt? Just just list them out for us like your resume. Okay. Okay. Like a certified social media marketer, social a certified master marketer, Certified uh, launch manager, certified um, director of operations, certified online business manager, uh, certified fix this next advisor, uh, certified high performance coach. <laughs> and let, wait, let's pause right there. So you just yesterday, like literally, finished your coaching certification in Brendan Bouchard's high performance coaching program. Many people listening to this are big fans of Brendan Burchard and are familiar with the work that he does. So just that's the one that intrigues me right now about you. Like share with us a little bit about his program and what that then helps you do for people. Mm, okay. So what fascinates me the most is when I first started working online, I got to know Brendan Burchard's work right away. And um, I, I remember when his book, High Performance uh, Habits came out, I got it free. Um, it was just sent to me and I read it twice and that I right away went to one of his events. And when I was at his event, I was like, this, this <laughs> excites me so much. Like this is my calling. I knew I wanted to be a coach, but once I went to his event, I knew that was it, but I knew I wasn't who I needed to be yet. Mm. And so the other certifications I mentioned were part of my roadmap I made for myself mm -hmm. to get to the top to reach this point to be a high performance coach because I specifically want to use it to serve business owners 
who are high achievers, who they're already achieving things, but they also need to sustain that success and then also continue to prioritize their faith and, and their family and take care of themselves. So that for me envelops high performance. Yeah, you, you summarized it so succinctly to me the other day. You were like, high performance coaching helps entrepreneurs not burn out. Like that's a pretty simplified way. Um, mm -hmm. I think you also said it helps them prioritize what matters most because you're not just focused. Like, I, and you and I are so aligned and so many people listening are so aligned. Nobody here, if you're listening to this podcast, I can pretty much assure, like, like assume that you don't want a successful business at the expense of your faith and family. And your health, like, like, although I think a lot of faith-filled entrepreneurs will sacrifice their health, but anyway, that's a whole other thing. But, you know, I can probably, I can make that assumption. If you're listening to this podcast, you don't want a successful business if it's going to sacrifice your faith and your family. And of course, you and I share this shared passion for that statement. So you have all of these different certifications under your belt. You then started working with clients. So tell me about that journey of working with different clients what was it like was it hard to find your clients and what kinds of results are you so excited about mm, okay so what when you get in the right room it's it can be actually pretty simple to find clients and so that is one of my uh takeaways from to help other people is is getting in the room um and so i joined a mastermind and and found a lot of my um million dollar type clients in that in that mastermind and so that opened my eyes up to the reality of what it takes to grow an online business and i share a lot of those we'll be talking about those later on this call but um it's so much more than just sharing stories on instagram there's so much more to it <laughs> so you got in the right room. I find that fascinating. I remember one of my mentors shared that with me. One of the reasons to join a high level coaching program or to join a mastermind may not be for the, the, the tactics or the information given. It may simply be to be in the right room. So I find that really interesting. Um, so then you started working with this very high level type of client and you have helped grow and scale businesses at the five, six, seven and eight figure level. And everybody listen to this. Don't drop your coffee. Don't drop, you know, food on your baby. Like just listen, she has generated over $50 million in that. And that's an estimation, like in combined revenue for all the clients that she has worked with and counting. Like that's not an insignificant number. That is not an insignificant number. And what amazes me about you too is that you have the actual experience, not just anecdotal. You didn't just read about it. You didn't just study it. You're not doing this just because it's like interesting to you. You have data and experience and observations and back end, you know, back room conversations. Like you have been behind the scenes on multiple successful launches. And so you just bring this incredible wealth of knowledge, like I said, PhD in online business. So keep on listening to this podcast because we are going to reveal Stephanie has made a list of 40 skills based on all of this experience, 40 skills that will increase your revenue as an entrepreneur. Okay. But I want to tell a story of how you and I got connected. So for several years, it sounds like you've had a, remind me, six-year career in online business. Mm -hmm. Okay. When did things start to shift for you in a different direction? And how did that lead to you and I connecting? <laughs> mm, okay. So, yeah, after I had been online for about a year, specifically blogging and helping people that way, I that's when I decided to shift to helping um, online business owners. Once the more I started taking these high ticket courses, I just realizing this, like being in a mastermind, I was, I remember specifically, kudos to my tribe, uh, Stu McLaren mastermind that I was in. They, they actually opened my eyes up to this and uh, they're like, you need to be helping other people. <laughs> and so um, 
so basically at that time, I remember uh, it was kind of personal, but <laughs> I was I was actually in confession when I had this light bulb moment and I hadn't really thought about it too much, but I just ended up telling the priest like after I was done with the confession, I was like, I, I feel that I'm called to help Catholic, to grow the Catholic, you know, online business owners to help them to grow Christ's kingdom. And I don't know what to do about it. And I haven't done anything yet about it. <laughs> but, what did the priest say? Well, he basically said that what I was doing was fine. Like, cause I, cause he knew what I was doing. Um, cause I was helping other people at the time, like with health and wellness. So, um, but it was just so interesting that that was the first time I verbalized it out loud. Mm, so it was just something that came out of me just I felt I needed to say it out loud oh my gosh amazing okay and so then what did you do with it you left that confessional did you leave that thought in the confessional or is that something that yeah, I kind of left it in the confessional <laughs> that was like back in 2018 <laughs> so it was a while ago um but it was interesting because I never I always wanted to meet a catholic I remember I I would um if I met anybody, like I wanted to work with them. The only Catholic I actually ran across was uh, Dr. Greg Vitaro. Mm. And I sent him a message saying, hey, can I work for you basically? <laughs> and you didn't need anybody at the time. But anyway, um, that was like the, I remember he was the only Catholic I knew online. Mm. And that fascinated me so much. And then um, somebody else had posted in a Facebook group that they were looking to work with a Catholic. And I was like, hello, oh, I can work with you. Cause she wanted, she wanted to do a, um, a like a business plan kind of thing. So anyway, uh, I worked with her and that was the most amazing experience um, that she was like a Catholic, she's like a Catholic therapist and wanted to start a business online. And that was just something I could not let go of. And she she sent me this uh, rosary bracelet that I always wear, actually. Oh, you're wearing um, it now? Yeah, she sent it to me as a thank you gift after. And it was just, just when I wear this, like it's that person, that's that reminder that I kept having that that experience was so genuine and so amazing. And it was just so fulfilling in a way that I had not experienced before. And so that kept pulling, like just wearing this rosary grace, it just kept pulling me back to that time, that thought, like what would it look like working with Catholic business owners? Hmm. So um, eventually like months later, which was back to like right before I met you, I actually Googled uh, Catholic entrepreneur. Okay, hold on. What prompted you to Google that? Like, was it just, again, a whim or has had something, did something nudge you? Like, obviously it was the Holy Spirit, but what happened when you were sitting down to Google that? Mm, well, <laughs> it's, um, it's, it's, uh, it's weird to say it out loud, but I've been working with, uh, meeting a lot of people who are, um, who didn't align up with my values mm. and it was starting to become, I was starting to feel interior, like, like uncomfort, mm. like something's wrong. Mm. And for me, one of my values that's even on my website is to be congruent with my values. Mm. And so um, I'm like, okay, like obviously God's showing me because I'm not listening to him. So he's like literally bringing these people like, like literally left and right to so many people that, that uh, just didn't share my values. And so uh, I had to say no to a lot of people, um, which made it to the point where it was, it was hard to find work for a little stretch there, like when I, when I actually found you. Um, and that's when I realized like, I, I wonder if God allowed that now for a reason, you know, to all these, that experience. Um, but yeah, it was just like, I need to find, I. I can't find them. So I just need to look for them, like seriously. And so that's when I found um, the Catholic CEO and I'm a researcher at heart. So I dug into all his stuff and I quickly found an interview that he had with you. 
And so once I heard that interview, I was halfway through it. I messaged you on Instagram. <laughs> oh my gosh, really? Oh my gosh, I have to go back and look up that message. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Yeah, Henry Katarna, if anyone is not familiar with his work, he goes by the moniker, the Catholic CEO. He has a coaching practice. He helps grow and scale businesses too. He really cares about generational wealth. I remember that being like such a thing for him. He wants to help other Catholics create wealth, not only for themselves, but for future generations to come. Um, he, he was instrumental in my story too. So I'm just so grateful that you Googled that at that particular time and found our podcast. And you know, what's funny about that podcast with Henry is that I remember feeling a little bit not ready to do it. Like, I remember being like, oh, I should cancel. I should cancel. I don't have a lack of self-confidence. Sometimes I do, but I felt it was very early in my sort of transition or whatever you want to call it, like very early in my journey in accepting my Catholic identity. And I, that's what I want to talk about now. And I want to quickly, because we have a shared, it's funny. I feel like we were on very parallel paths in the online secular business space, but for whatever reason, we never were at the same events at the same time. Like I spoke at Tribe Live the year before you went and I was in a, a tribe, you know, I was connected to a lot of tribe people, a lot of tribe Catholics actually, interestingly. And it was funny. We all kind of connected like, oh yeah, I could tell you were Catholic. Like, like the way you would talk in the group, I could tell, like it was this funny little like inside crew, but I want to tell you a story, Stephanie, um, about a Michael Hyatt conference. So I actually, I can't remember who I met first. If it was like Stu I met online first or Michael Hyatt I met online, but that's for sure how I got connected to one of them. And um, I had a, a, a manual, like a, a way of understanding the world that if you do business, you don't talk about your faith. Like it's just not what you do. Business is like serious. It's void of vulnerability, if I'm being really honest. Like I kind of just thought, you're like this way in business and then you're this way everywhere else. And I remember at this Michael Hyatt conference being very challenged by that because he at the time, he probably still does, attracted a lot of Christians. So there were a lot of people there at this, again, secular conference. It was not labeled or marketed as a Christian conference. There were many non-Christians there too. But there were lots of people willing to just be themselves out loud. And I remember coming in with this like manual of this is what a business owner should look like. This is what professionalism looks like. This is what it looks like to be taken seriously, to have credibility. It did not include talking about my faith or what I believed in. And I remember having several moments, but there was one moment in particular where I, I think it was Crystal Payne who was speaking and Crystal was talking about just like the willingness to be yourself. And I just remember sitting there in that cold conference center and just being like, I don't know how to do that. Like, I don't know how to truly just like be one version of myself. And let me know in the comments if you can kind of relate to what I'm saying. Like where maybe you're Catholic with your Catholic friends, but then with other group of friends, you're not as vulnerable. Like it's making me kind of choke up a little bit even talking about it because it's such an injustice to ourselves when we feel like we have to compartmentalize and it's, I don't want to say it's an injustice to God. Like that's, that's not the right word, but like it definitely doesn't glorify him when we feel like we have to be a certain way in certain places. And I remember weeping, weeping and a friend of mine who I just sort of met, like I was just getting to know at this conference, this beautiful blonde, Dallas, like full on Dallas Southern twang, like just gorgeous, gorgeous, exactly what you would picture beautiful woman from Dallas to look like. And she kind of like just came over to me and was like, hon, what's going on? Like with her beautiful twang. And I just like wept on her shoulder and I just was explaining to her, I feel like the Lord is calling me to just be myself online, but I don't know how to do that. And your bracelet story just made me think she at the end of the conference came up to me and took a bracelet off her own wrist and was like, I want to give this to you. And it had the word fearless on it. 
And I still have it. It's like sitting in my jewelry box, like right over there. I wish I could like run and grab it, but it'll take too long. And I, and she was just like, the Lord's calling you to be fearless. There is a scary thing, or at least I'm sure people can relate. Let us know in the comments if you can relate to this about just truly embrace your faith, especially in the online sphere. Stephanie, what did you do? First of all, can you relate to what I'm saying? Were you kind of afraid to really embrace and say this out loud? Hey, like stake in the sand. I want to work with Catholics. What was going on? What or what continues? Can you relate to this? And where are yeah. you are now? Where are you now on that? I can completely relate. The the reason why I contacted you was because of that story that you shared with Henry. That that where you know I knew your HDTV and that you were struggling and you had a mindset coach to help you um, to get to move to to make that transition. And I'm like, that's what I need. I don't need a business coach. I I don't even it wasn't even necessarily a mindset coach. I needed Lisa <laughs> to help me to guide me through that transition as she did to walk me through that. And so I started working with you right away. And over the last six months, you've actually helped me through that transition. Hmm. So what would you say to anyone? Mitch is here in the comments. Hi, Mitch in the Philippines. I can relate. I used to stop at saying I'm Christian, not necessarily Catholic, to blend in with the other Christians. But now I'm saying more and more that I'm Catholic. What would you say to anybody else who like Mitch, who like me, who like you, um, has felt that fear or has felt that hesitancy of just being completely who they are? Well, I'd say it's okay to feel the fear, but when we can go to someone and to help us walk through that, we don't have to do it alone. That's why God created community. And you know, people like me and Lisa to, to help support one another. And God recognizes that and looks kindly upon it. So you contacted me. I remember you bought one of my $99 products. Like, so one of my sort of like entry level products, it was a 90 day challenge I was running um, that had some accountability built in and you joined me in that. And then I think you were the second person to join me in my uh, wealth without guilt inner circle mastermind. Um, at that time, I think it was $3,000 and you paid the early bird. So you got in at 2,500. And I remember thinking like, oh my gosh, I can't believe she wants to be in my mastermind. <laughs> she has so much more experience than I do in all my business. I can't believe she wants to be in my mastermind. And then what, what happened next, I think is just so interesting. And I really want to share this story. Um, and I hope it's okay that I'm sharing, you know, some, stop me if you don't want me to share all the details. But as I was coaching you, I was of course asking you all kinds of questions you know, what, where do you feel like you're uniquely equipped? Where do you think, you know, the Lord has given you unique gifts and talents? What can you do where you forget to go to the bathroom, where, you know, you forget to eat, where time flies by? And there were some interesting questions, like, um, just like, what do you feel like the Lord is truly calling you to do with your unique time on this earth? And the more I read and the more I learned and the more I asked you questions, I just could not unsee. Like I could not unhear. It just became so glaringly obvious that you and I are so aligned in creating a Catholic economy, supporting the Catholic economy, helping Catholic entrepreneurs grow, helping Catholic entrepreneurs make money, helping Catholic entrepreneurs get out of their own heads in terms of their mindset around making money. But then you specifically with the plan and the tactics with your vast experience of launching in so many different businesses. So for anyone who might not understand the term Catholic economy, what do we mean when we say this, Stephanie? The Catholic economy to me is actually um, creating uh, business owners that actually support one another and where you where you patron one another and to increase that so that we can really make a difference in this world 
um, with with our wallets and when times get tough to to really support one another so that we have each other mm-hmm. when when let's say paypal shuts you down because they find out your beliefs we literally create a catholic economy to sustain one another and it's interesting to me because i think some people might hear it and be like ooh that's like at the exclusion of other people but i honestly don't think it's that way. Like I, I support lots of businesses with other, you know, there's, I have a beautiful um, sleep, uh, sleep training consultant um, who is a, a beautiful, faithful Jew. So it's, it's not at the exclusion of other people, but what I think many consumers don't think about is where is my dollar going? And that's what I want to encourage everybody to think about. Even if you, and this is my argument. Okay. Everybody, you can disagree with me. And I know times are tough. I know it's really challenging. When I make these decisions for myself, it's sometimes a little painful because I know I could go to a big box store and buy something for 99 cents a box, but I sometimes make a very conscious choice to buy it elsewhere. And that's the thing. It's like my dollar is going to go to support the livelihood. My dollar is going to go to support a mom who wants to stay home with her children. My dollar is going to support a company that employs other moms who want to stay home with their children. And let me tell you, I'm willing to pay a little bit more than maybe somewhere else in order to support a mom particularly stay home with their kids. I don't know how many other times I can say it. I love the idea for those who are called. Do we need people in hospitals? Do we need people in schools? Do we need people in other places of employment? 100%. But for people who have discerned that they would, they have a calling that they would prefer to be home with their children, but make money from home. I am like, raise my hand, take my money. I want to support you, right? And so I know we have a very shared, you know, belief around that. Why does this matter, Stephanie? Like, why does it matter that we think about where our money goes as consumers? Well, I've always personally thought it was my my temperament or just who I am. Um, but I'm realizing, you know, I've been in the in greater, more Catholic communities since meeting you, and I'm realizing that this is a general a general sentiment that we actually share. And so for me, like life, for me, life is a waiting room for heaven. And so everything I do here is very intentional and purposeful. And so my, I'm, I'm really working to like load up the bus, you know, bring everyone to heaven. And so everything I do matters. So, so helping people, um, supporting one another, like in, through their thoughts, through their work, through day to day, through big visions. And, and I just, I'm really trying to do my part and help other people to do their part, to live with purpose, live with intention, glorify God, save souls, like all of, all of it. And you know, money of course is not everything. I know many miserable people who have a lot of money. I know lots of happy people who have very little money. Like money obviously is not, not everything, but money does allow things to happen and money can fund and fuel many initiatives. And I know for people listening here, their pursuit of money might be for more family peace, for their ability for both parents to be at home, for the ability to have greater flexibility, maybe to homeschool or maybe to travel or maybe to just Again, send your children to the school of choice, right? Lots of different reasons. But I know for a lot of people listening, they want to make money to build pregnancy centers, to support nonprofits, to um, feed the poor, you know, to to all all that kind of stuff. What's a cause that you just personally, Stephanie, are interested in supporting right now? Ooh, I actually want to support your cause, Lisa. (laughs) Because you, you have a brand new um, cause that, that you're building. And I've actually thought about uh, donating to that. Oh, thank you so much. Persevere Together is the new charity my husband and I are starting to support couples with mental illness. So thank you for that. 
and, and, but, but that's the reality. It costs money to do things. We don't live in a society where we barter, you know, it, it, it's just not currently how, how we live. And so we do need funds to make certain things happen. And so this is why I just think it's so exciting and it's so motivating and it's so worth it to do this work. So if you are curious about what it looks like to build your own business, if you are curious, especially if you have made money already, but maybe feel like I'm just kind of on a hamster wheel of the same results, I'm making around the same amount of money every single month. It's feeling like it's really difficult. I want to encourage you to come check out our Craft Your Six Figure Business Blueprint Live Coaching Week, where Stephanie and I are teaming up to share with you how to craft your unique blueprint. It is not a one size fits all. We're certainly going to share principles that are tried and true, especially from the many different kinds of businesses and scales of businesses that Stephanie has been involved in, but you're going to craft your unique plan for yourself. And so you can join us, grab your ticket to this event. Honestly, Stephanie, what this is going to be is well worth, like well worth, like it's like thousands of dollars. Like honestly, if we were to really just like package this up, we could easily sell this as like a multi thousand dollar course. And so honestly, like run and get your ticket because I think it is the best $19 someone could ever spend on their business. And and I honestly, like I really hold firm to that because I've been in business. I was in interior design for about 10 years and then started coaching um, more recently. And I guess I would call myself like a coach business the last three years or so uh, formally. Um, we're putting together in a week long very digestible experience, what has taken me easily 15 years business experience to learn. And I just, I'm so excited to shorten the cycle of stress <laughs> for some people, right? And and just like learn the things that are necessary. There are certain, I don't know if I want to call them universal, I'm putting that in air quotes, but there are certain things that Stephanie, you have seen that are patterns, right? Would you say, right? In behavior um, and yes. for, for entrepreneurs. And so we're going to be sharing so much of that in our coach week. And so I want to encourage you to grab your ticket. Honestly, you don't, you just, you don't want to miss it. Like just you really don't want to miss it. This is something that will help you just this week alone. If you joined us for just this week alone, I believe you could make incredible strides in your business. All right. I want to get to some of these patterns, some of these patterns, some of these skills, Stephanie, that you have observed in your businesses. Can you give us a sense of like, you don't have to give us the exact number, but like maybe just give us a little bit of a flavor of the different kinds of businesses you've worked in. Maybe just like their genres, their industries, like tell us a little bit about your vast array of experience. Hmm. Okay. So at first, um, I started helping people who were like marketers who helped people to grow their businesses. And I really enjoyed that. Uh, also helping uh, people in the health and wellness industry. And then also like people who um, help like who are teachers, like teaching something, uh, whether in different kind of industries, um, some agencies, Facebook ad agency. Um, another uh, box agency, like different different things. But I kind of, in the end, I kind of condensed it to coaches and course creators mm. and agency owners. <laughs> How many launches would you say you've done in your career? Um, gosh, it's hard to say because I have not counted, but it's, I really started focusing on specifically launching, I think in, um, 2020, mm -hmm. per se. Mm -hmm. So it's been since then. So most of my experience was during COVID mm. launching. So mm. yeah, that was that was an interesting time. If you're willing to share, what is the most a client has made that you worked on personally in a single launch? Mm, gosh, oh, that's hard to say. <laughs> I've had someone ask me that before. I really don't know. I 
you know, you know how priests forget uh, sins after confession. Like seriously, when I move on from a client, I I put it in a vault and I close the door because I confidentiality is so important to me. Mm -hmm. um, I was a nurse for ten years, so I learned confidentiality. Like I would take care of a priest of a parish that I was in, and I couldn't even tell anyone. So like, it's it's something that I've just gotten used to. Like I close the door and and that's that. So I I don't know. Well, I can tell. I'm going to share because you've told me certain numbers. You have helped people have six figure launches. Like mm -hmm. where they're making significant like significant six figures in a launch. So that is, I will, I will share. <laughs> I will share some of your numbers. All right. but, you've also, but you've also shared with me um, in our conversations that you've also helped people more in the five figure launch. And you have helped me on my most recent launch. It is all because everybody, it's Stephanie's fault. It's all Stephanie's fault that I launched um, at my Wealth Without Guilt Academy and my Motherhood Without Guilt Academy. I brought you into my business to give it an outside view. I had been kind of obviously in it for a while and um, really was looking for a fresh perspective. You know, I've been very public here about certain disappointments in my business in 2022. And I was just very transparent with you with all of it. And you just so matter of factly in such a short amount of time. That's the other thing, like in such a short amount of time told me what to do. You're a fellow commander like me. So meaning we both are inclined to tell our clients what to do. And we both have a shared challenge of helping our clients also self-discover, which is really important. Sometimes we want to just get into command, <laughs> command mode, but you really just told me what to do. You were like, you are missing this element of your business. You're missing a um, accessible recurring revenue model. And that I, in one call, you helped me increase my bottom line in my business every single month exponentially. Like, so it's just, it's, it's just, I love your breadth of experience. So what we have in the show notes, I want to encourage you to go look in the show notes. If you're watching this on YouTube, it's right below in the description. If you are listening to this on podcast, go to the show notes. We have a download for you with 40 skills to increase your revenue. And this is based on Stephanie's observation of entrepreneurs at the five, six, seven, eight figure levels that she has worked with. So this is not anecdotal. This is not like she's just reading case studies. This is her tried and true blood, sweat and tears experience. So I do want to read them. I'm going to read them kind of quickly, but then I want to pause Stephanie on um, some of them to talk about them. How does that sound? Sounds good. So why don't you feel free to interject if you really, like I know the ones I wanna talk about, but why don't you feel free to interject on some of the ones that you wanna talk about? Okay, so number one, and these are in no particular order. Um, number one, invest in personal growth to gain the skills necessary for business success. And this includes business leadership, um, personal development, being involved in memberships and courses, especially when you're getting started, mindset coaching, and investing in your team's personal growth when you're ready for it. Number two, taking care of your mental, physical, and spiritual health. Number three, practicing gratitude, prayer, journaling for consistent reflection. Number four, surround yourself with a supportive community of like-minded entrepreneurs that are going in the same direction you're headed and make this community a priority for giving and receiving. You are really good at this, Stephanie. I have observed you do this in action. You are so good at giving and receiving. Number five, know your mission, vision, and core values. Number six, build a community or movement of people you genuinely care about and want to hang out with. Number seven, build an email list that you sell to. Number eight, create an attractive character built around your authentic self that gives to your followers. You will gain a list of super fans that want to be like you in some way and will buy everything you offer. 
Number nine, have a clear message where it's easy to get referrals, talk about you to others, and know what you stand for. Number 10, take fast, decisive action in spite of fear and uncertainty. Okay, we're going to pause on that one because I know you have a lot to say about that one. Why did this one make the list, Stephanie? Yes, um, it can make quite a difference. I've noticed in the people that make income and the ones that don't is that we all feel fear and uncertainty. We all feel imposter syndrome, all those things. And the differentiator are the ones that take action and the ones that don't in spite of the fear. Mm -hmm. And you know what's awesome about being a Catholic coach and getting coaching in a Catholic container is that you know you're not alone. You know that the true change agent is the Holy Spirit. And you know that you don't have to be self-reliant. Like this fear and uncertainty, of course, it's going to be um, traumatic even. If you think, oh my gosh, I have to do this scary thing all on my own. But oh, there's so much freedom when you realize I'm not alone, actually. My safety net actually is Jesus Christ. Like that safety net has been there all along. And I just have to step out in faith, knowing I've discerned all those things. All right. Yeah, that's that's a huge one. Number 11, work in sprints that create huge momentum. I could unpack every single one of these, but we're not going to because we don't have time. But uh, I could unpack every single one of these. Number 12, learn how to lead. Number 13, build a team that aligns with your mission and team culture around your values. Number 14, delegate or outsource to focus on being the face of the company, creating content and building and nurturing relationships. Number 15, care about the people you serve and know them intimately. Number 16, set up systems and create processes for recurring tasks. Number 17, create KPIs and track your metrics to inform decision making. Let's pause on that one. This was probably for me where I gained the most from working with you, inviting you into my business and inviting you to look at my um, metrics uh, was, well, I don't want to say it was, it wasn't really terrifying to be honest, because I don't know, I, at this point in my business, I'm kind of just like, it is what it is. Like, I don't know, my numbers are what they are. There's no reason to be, you know, ashamed or um, embarrassed or whatever. Like, I'm kind of just a bit more neutral about my numbers than I was in the past. But to make decisions based on metrics, Stephanie, why is that so important? Hmm. So, so many people starting out will do things and make decisions based on their gut or based on what a coach told them to do or what they see other people are doing around them. And you really don't know if it's efficient or not if you're not gathering data and looking at the numbers. I call it a debrief. And so um, that that helped Lisa to inform her decision that, you know, I do want a recurring, uh, you know, model. And so it's just, also helps when you have a launch, for example, and you you might feel bad like, gosh, I, that didn't make very much money or not many people went in. But once you look at the data and look at, these are benchmarks for this industry. And I can't tell you how many times, more times than not, it's, it's actually most of the time where I help people to realize that they actually did good. The, the launch was actually good for benchmark numbers for the reach they had for the email list size they had. So if you want bigger numbers, just get a bigger list size. <laughs> there was something you told me. You, I remember we were boxing back and forth about it. I remember I was walking around my beautiful lake in Florida and feeling all kinds of like, am I actually going to do this? For whatever reason, I had a big limiting belief around recurring revenue, like meaning monthly membership. I don't know why. I had a big, big, big limiting belief. And it was metrics that got me. You were like, how many people are on your email list again? And um, so on and so forth. And then you were like, if 1% of your email list joined your new offering, Lisa, you were like, this would equal blank thousands of dollars, like thousands and thousands of dollars per month. And I remember exactly where I was. I was kind of like, 
halfway between my normal route going home. Like I was halfway home. And I remember just standing there being like, Stephanie's going to change my life. Like, how have I never done this before? It was that single metric when you were like 1% of your email list, if they invested in this, that is thousands of dollars per month. And I just was like, and I've just never done it. I didn't have to, can Stephanie tell me what to do? Like, it was just so, <laughs> so, so helpful. Okay. So KPIs. Number 18, quarterly strategic planning to prioritize projects and make plans. Number 19, the 19th skill to increase your revenue, have a strategic partner to help make business decisions. This could be a coach, a business partner, or a contractor that holds a leadership position. Number 20, build partnerships with other business owners. Number 21, create an amazing experience for your customers with an emphasis on onboarding and continuing a great experience for the lifetime of the customer. Number 22, be hyper vigilant about creating no brainer offers. Number 23, be consistent with being visible. Number 24, have a big vision for a big impact. Number 25, get in front of other people's audiences and prioritize audiences where your avatar is that and they're, they're, um, and they're larger than yours. Number 26, be resourceful, find a way. Number 27, be obsessed with creating results for your clients. Your client's success is your success. 28, always be marketing and in lead generation mode. 29, learn how to communicate, be engaging and storytell. 30, be able to do your own copywriting when necessary and keep the brand voice consistent. When outsourcing copy, be able to express the brand voice to the copywriter. I can't tell you, this is like a personal pet peeve. I can always, I can often tell when a copywriter has been involved with somebody I follow for a long time and when it's not. And it can take a while. Like certainly there's like growing pains, so to speak, in having somebody else understand your voice. But I personally, I, I really agree with this one. I think there's nothing like the voice of the person who you have, you know, invested in. Mm -hmm to follow. Okay. Number 31, be comfortable with consistently creating content. 32, use your competitive nature to your advantage to always seek that extra edge over others you see in the marketplace. 33, be always in market research mode to keep content and offers fresh. Number 34, don't be a follower. Many consider themselves rebels and do what they want. I could pause on that one, but I want to make sure we have enough time to chat at the end. So we're going to keep going. Number 35, regularly test the market by trying something new and push limits. 36, be detached from the outcome, move past your mistakes and be okay with not being liked by everyone. 37, know when to pivot and pivot quickly. 38, do not be lukewarm about your business. Know what you like and do not like. Know what you want and you don't want. 39, use sales funnels to sell products and services and offers. And number 40, do not give up when it gets hard and you can't see the fruit of your labor. Building a business can take time and sacrifice. Stephanie, I remember when you shared this list with me, I was like, oh my word. Like the whole world needs to read this because this is just such a great, meaningful, well compiled, succinct list, I think, of what it takes to run a business at the scale that gets you to five, six, seven, even eight figures of revenue. Stephanie, what do you want to add to this conversation that maybe you haven't had the chance to say? Hmm. Well, there's one theme that I've noticed throughout and to my success. And I just got to put this plug, but masterminds, mm -hmm. masterminds have been the, my uh, catalyst to my success mm -hmm. in my business career. So interesting. And when you think about it, that's how you and I really got into this new relationship. It was mm -hmm. funny because we, we, I've been honest with you how, I was like, okay, wait, am I your coach? Or now are we moving into business partner kind of conversation? So it's it's an interesting thing to navigate. But what a blessing it's been, Stephanie, to have you as one of my coaching clients 
and then just learn as a result of coaching you to your greatest um, you know, level or lens of yourself that really it just is a no brainer that we should be teaming up. I think what's so interesting is that I bring the Catholic mindset coaching and some of the very practical elements of running a business with nine kids and different challenges in the home. I think I bring that very lived out experience. And then you bring these very tactical um, and very high level, like, like I can coach from my experience from the coaching clients that I've had, but to be honest, it's how many clients have I had in my career who have made, like who I've coached to a place that they've made significant income. It's not that many. You have the very unique experience of the back end of so many different businesses. And that's why I'm just so excited to share with everybody our six figure blueprint experience, as well as this 40 skills to increase your revenue. So you can go to the description below and there is a link there where you can download what I just read to you. And I, I really hope it's the kind of thing you print off, put on your bulletin board or wherever you look when you're working and use it almost as a bit of an audit. Like, okay, where do I need help? And when you come to our six figure business blueprint, coach week, we are going to tackle all the things that are on that list. So, um, or many of the things that are on that list. Um, Stephanie, it's been just such a delight, like really just such a delight to have you in my life, both as a friend and professionally, you have, I'm going to say, quote unquote, forced me, <laughs> forced me, um, to get out of my own way and to consider why I've been holding on to limiting beliefs, um, to consider and to challenge why I've been holding myself back in certain areas. And you do it in this way that is uh, very harmonious. Like sometimes I can, I can like picture your nurse mode, nurse <laughs> mode, um, Stephanie, like just how you just, you're very gentle, but you're also very firm. I can imagine you being like, no, you're taking your medicine. I'm going to stand here and watch you. And I'm not leaving until you take it. Like I can picture yeah. that today. Um, and so you do that just so naturally. And so I just, you've been such a blessing to my business and my life. And I'm just so excited that now we get to team up in this way. I think it's, don't you think it's just more fun and better when people do things together? <laughs> it's so much more fun. When I do my, my uh, seven daily journal every morning, you have been in there, Lisa, as a thank you, Jesus. This is fun. Like it's been great. It stretched me just one last thing. It has stretched me also like vulnerability wise. I think sometimes when you are a business owner, maybe an established business owner, but not even established, I think, because I, I noticed this in my beginner um, clients who are beginning their journeys. It can be a little jarring to just be honest and be like, here are my numbers. Here are my hangups. Here's what I want to do. What's easy for me to do, but what's not. And just kind of be all like open about it. Um, but you know, it sounds cliche, but it's very, very true. What has gotten us to a certain point, you know, will get us to a certain point. But when you do want to get to a next mountaintop, there are new skills. Like it's only natural to be able to conclude that there are new skills that are necessary. All right, Stephanie, in closing, is there anything else that you haven't been able to say already today? Thank you, Lisa, for, for coming into my life and embracing me the way you have. It's it's truly been a joy, like uh, the opportunities of, that you've brought just through your mastermind, meeting the other Catholic women, and what we've brought to each other's businesses in that container. Like there's nothing like it. And I feel so passionate about what you're doing specifically in your mastermind that, that that's why I'm continuing to to do the work I do and moving into the Catholic niche. And um, it's truly been just abundance and grace. And I thank you for working with God to, <laughs> to do all this. Praise the Lord. May we decrease and you increase, Lord Jesus. Teresa, thank you so much for watching. Teresa says, the list is in my inbox. Both of you are inspirational Catholic women. Thank you for organizing this and letting me join in lots to consider. I hope this is the kind of podcast that has stirred things up for you a little bit.
I hope you do feel a little bit of restlessness. I want to encourage you not to confuse restlessness with defeat or like, just may I encourage you if you are feeling discouraged, like, oh, great. Now there's 40 things I'm not doing. That's okay. Sit in that discomfort of either discomfort or disappointment or discouragement. Sit in there for a minute. But then honestly, pick just pick one. Pick mm -hmm. one of the elements and see, is there anything I can do on this list of 40 that I can, you know, just dabble in a little bit today? And one of the very first things that you can do is sign up for our six figure business blueprint because you will get a plan. Final notes from me. You can have all the abundant thoughts in the world. Like I would say that I'm pretty decent at abundant thinking, trusting the Lord. I mean, I struggle a lot with it as well, but I would say I can coach myself to a place of abundance and trust in the Lord. But if you don't know what to do, <laughs> like if you don't have a plan from that place of abundance, you kind of can just do a whole bunch of things with a lot of abundance, like, like meaning a plan, a strategic plan, and one that is informed by experience and knowledge of the marketplace of the online space is so invaluable. And again, I will be forever just grateful, Stephanie, for you providing that in my business. And let's go provide it to a whole bunch of Catholic women. We will see you all next time on the Possibility Mom podcast and at our six-figure business blueprint week. Bye, everybody.